Okay, so now this circuit is a more realistic situation that could happen in real life, which which is basically the same circuit that I had before, which is this guy, plus a resistor RL here, L standing for load. So I have a load resistance here. Why is it realistic? Well, if you think about it, if I make uh, this DC voltage across the capacitor, I'm not going to have this DC voltage just for the sake of creating a DC voltage. I need this DC voltage to be used for something. Let's say that I want to charge a cell phone. If I want to use this DC voltage to, I don't know, turn on an electronic circuit, right? So I have to connect it to something else. I have to connect it to another circuit, and that circuit is going to basically use DC, this DC voltage as its VDD, as its supply voltage, right? So let's say that basically I connect this to a, like a small motor or your, your cell phone charger, right? Remember that adapter, the charger basically requires a certain DC voltage and a certain current, right? It, like, for example, the adapter picture that we saw, if I remember correctly, it required three volts or five volts and a two amperes current, okay? Meaning that uh, your cell phone is going to draw two amperes from your VDD, right? So from this DC, meaning that there is going to be some current here and this capacitor is going to discharge. It's not going to be like basically once the diode is off, I'm not going to have just the capacitance sitting by itself. It's going to be connected to some path to ground that is basically made by the circuit that I've connected to this, right? So for now, because I, I don't care what kind of a circuit I connect to it, I have to model it with something and I'm going to model it with resistance, right? I'm going to say that whatever circuit that I've connected to my, I don't know, the rectifier thing that I made, the AC to DC converter, whatever I, whatever circuit that I made, uh, whatever circuit that I've connected to this is going to draw some current and it's going to have some equivalent resistance. Let's call that the Thevenin and equivalent resistance of that entire circuit. So I'm going to replace that circuit or I'm going to model that circuit with just a simple resistance, right? At the end of the day, all I'm trying to say is that there is going to be some current drawn from this capacitor, okay? So now let's see what, hap what happens to my V out when there is some sort of a current discharging the capacitor, okay? So in the beginning, everything is the same as before. So when the diode is on, so in the beginning, well, when the V in is less than 0 0.7, uh, my diode is off, and then the diode turns on, and V out is following V in all the way to the peak, right? The moment I go after the peak, uh, the moment I pass the peak at the V in, I know that the diode turns off, right? Because, well, I have a 4.3 here, and here I had 5, and then it became 4.9, for example. So my diode is off. So at this point, again, diode turns off. And my circuit is going to look like this. So when the diode is off, I'm going to have the capacitor and the resistor. The capacitor is charged to a certain voltage, which is 4.3 for, for our case. And the resistor is going to draw some current from it. So do I know how to analyze this circuit? Yes, of course. I've taken electrical circuits course. I know that this is a natural response of an RC circuit, that I have an initial voltage on the capacitor, which is 4.3. And I know that this capacitor is going to discharge into this resistor until it is fully discharged. Okay, so there's going to be some dying exponential kind of a function for the voltage of the capacitor, right? And that is why we have this V out. So it's going to have this uh, basically discharge. And then depending on the size of the capacitor and size of the resistor, remember the time constant of this exponential depends on RC, right? So I might discharge at this rate that is shown or at this rate or at this rate. But let's say that we're only looking at this rate for now. We're going to talk about different rates in a couple of slides from now, right? So I know that for the... Uh, Basically, no matter what is the R and what is the C, I'm going to have some sort of a discharge for V out. So my V out during the time that the diode is off is going to discharge little by little, right? So uh, what happens is that my V out starts to decrease. And on the other side, my V in goes from the peak all the way to zero, and then it goes negative, and then comes back positive, and then it turns on, right? 
at what point? At the point that V in becomes 0.7 volts higher than that the, the current value of V out, the instantaneous value of V out, right? Which is basically at this point. Okay, so let's say that my 4.3 starts to discharge, and by the time I'm getting at, uh, I reach T3, what happens is that my, like, I don't know, my voltage at the capacitor is 3.9, right? So I know that if the voltage at the capacitor, the V out is 3.9, so this is after discharge at T3. So at T3, my capacitor's voltage is 3.9, and I know that 3.9 plus 0.7 becomes 4.6. So the moment that my input reaches 4.6 volts, so basically 3.9 plus 0.7. Once I reach this 4.6 volts, my diode turns on. So diode turns on. And the moment that the diode turns on, you can see that it starts to charge the capacitor again, right? So it's going to fight the discharge that is caused by the resistor, but it's stronger, hopefully. Well, we are going to design it in a way that it, it is stronger than the discharge rate of the resistor so that it's going to charge it back all the way to 4.3 again, right? And if I can, and then the moment that we pass the peak, again, the, ter the diode turns off and the discharge process starts again and we're going to have this discharge again okay so if i continue this sinusoidal forever so if this is my sinusoidal if this is my v in basically my v out is going to look like this so initially it's going to go up all the way to here and then from that point forward i'm going to have discharge and again charged up and then discharged and again charged up discharge and this is going to go forever and ever right so what does this tell me it tells me that i kind of converted the ac signal that i had at the input to some sort of uh, let's say low quality dc signal right it is a dc signal meaning that it's not really oscillating going to negative and positive but it's not let's call it low quality right why because it has these ripples right it just goes from this 4.3 to 3.9 back so like this is 4.3 and then goes all the way to let's say 3.9 and these are just numbers right goes back to 4.3 again back to 3.9 so it just has this like 0.4, 400 millivolts of ripple going up and down, which, well, I don't like it really, right? So it's basically something that makes my DC not really perfectly DC. I have these fluctuations that I don't like, but well, they're there, right? And I have to do something about it. And we're going to discuss what can we do about this, these ripples. But there is this VR, ripple voltage, that exists there, right? So again... In a realistic scenario where I don't have just the capacitor, I also have a resistor that is representing whatever I have connected to this DC voltage that I have made. Um, I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to convert my AC signal to a DC signal. However, this DC is not like perfect DC. It's going to have some ripples on it. And then we, are, we have to actually calculate how much ripple do I have and then how, and we're going to discuss about how to make this ripple as small as possible.